For those of us expecting our Mega 65 by Christmas, I've got some bad news. The Mega 65 is delayed until March. Ho ho no! If, like me, you were on the short list to receive a Mega 65 before the end of 2020, looks like we'll be in for a little wait for the Easter Bunny who will be making that delivery instead of Santa. Hey, it's nothing to get your tinsel in a tangle about. Here's the official announcement on the Discord channel. Turns out it's not a shortage of electronic parts, but rather a shortage of paper products. The Mega 65 cannot ship until March 2022. Am I disappointed? You bet, as I'm sure many of you are. However, there are positives to this announcement, says the guy whose glass is always half full. Those who are on the second round of shipments will receive their Mega 65 at about or on the same time as the original 400. If you want to receive one of the first shipments now, you can run over to the Mega 65 website, place your order, and you will be a part of the initial rollout. There's a positive for you. While we wait, we have plenty of Mega 65 projects to dive into. I've shared earlier how to set up the Mega 65 on a Nexus 4 for less than $300 and how to install the free XEMU emulator on a Mac. In those projects, I mentioned the closed ROM for the Mega 65 is available to purchasers of the Mega 65 or the dev kit and those who've not purchased a dev kit must technically or legally use the open ROM, which is not quite ready for prime time. Okay, now for a little legalese. Downloading and patching the C65 ROM file is a legal sticky wicket. I share this process to educate the community. However, in order to use the original ROM, technically must own a Mega 65, a dev kit, or an original C65. Do you happen to have one of those in your closet somewhere? Cloanto owns the rights to the C65 ROMs, but does not include those rights in their C64 Forever license. That would be a nice touch. I wish they would include that. Because of this odd, legal issue for an abandoned 30-year-old computer ROM, I take no responsibility for your legal or illegal use of original C65 ROMs. Be safe out there. Since the open ROM needs more time to bake, the last update was over four months ago, using it means really mixed results. However, there is a solution. We can search and download the original Commodore 65 ROM and then patch that file with tools created by the Mega 65 team I'll show the process and we will see if we can go back in time and load the original ROM in the emulator on a Nexus 4 or on the Mega 65 dev kit. So let's get a little bit of hot chocolate here. Let's get in the holiday and celebrating season and let's start patching ROMs, folks. Now, as I've said, everything that you need, all the links, all the instructions are also in the companion blog post. So be sure and check that out if you get lost throughout this video. So let's go back to that open ROM. What, what's the problem with the open ROM? Well, the open ROM is an interesting project. A group of developers are working to create a license-free ROM that includes the updates from the Mega 65 closed ROM and add its own unique features. This project is still a work in progress, as I mentioned, and even a simple program like this one doesn't work. This caused many complaints from my readers and YouTube followers who wanted to try and install XEMU and build a Nexus 4. Why would you do this if you don't have a ROM you can use? Hey, I get it. The Nexus 4 is a $300 project. You wanna be able to use it. There's not a good value proposition if you've got a ROM that doesn't work. Even free with XEMU, Without a ROM, it's just an exercise in frustration. We're gonna fix that today, okay? So before we begin with the ROM, let's just take a quick look at the Commodore 65 again. Remember, the Commodore 65 was a prototype computer. It was formerly known as the C64DX and it never entered production in or around the year 1991. It was a successor to the Commodore 64, the Plus 4, the C128, and the C65 was meant to be the computer to rule all 8-bit computers. It included a super speedy 3.5 megahertz CPU and it had graphics that could rival an Amiga of the time. Unfortunately, the C65 never saw the light of day beyond the believed to be about 200 to 300 prototypes machines which leaked out during a clearance or fire sale at the end of Commodore's life. Luckily, owners fortunate enough to get those original C65 prototypes have dumped the ROM file contents and shared them online. I'll not link directly or show you directly where you can locate the ROMs. However, let's look at the steps for locating those ourselves. 
Just a quick note, as an owner of a Mega 65 dev kit, I do own a license for the C65 ROM and can continue with this experiment legally, all right? But for now, let's open our browsers and navigate to your favorite search engine, such as Google or DuckDuckGo, my preference, and search for a file called 911001.bin. You'll likely find a page that includes multiple links. Pick one, search for that bin file, download it, place that file on your desktop or in some other easy to find location. With the original ROM available, it is time to patch it and add the new functions of the Mega 65. But before we patch the ROM, I was curious, could you use the original ROM in the XEMU software emulator on the Nexus 4 FPGA, and could I also use the original ROM on my Mega 65 dev kit and take a little virtual time travel to the past? Hmm. Now to me, that would mean that the Mega 65 developers are honoring and respecting what came before. They're not modifying the ROM so it's not compatible with what could have been in 1991, but they've upgraded and added features to maintain compatibility. I suspect that is the case, but let's find out. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try the XEMU emulator, which uses the XMega65 emulator. I've shared how to set this up in a blog post in a previous video, be sure to check that out. However, I will share again the process to use the original C65 ROM before I test it. First of all, you wanna place the original ROM file on the desktop or some other location where you can find it. There's no need to rename the ROM file you, when you use it with XEMU. I didn't make that mistake in the original, but I did correct that in the video errata on the companion blog post. Then you will load the emulator, XMega65. You wanna right click in the XMega65 window and a menu will appear. From the menu, select SD card, update files on SD image, then select your ROM file using the file browsing window that will appear. Navigate to the ROM file location, select the ROM file and click OK and then you'll see this prompt. Click the OK button and XMega will boot Check it out, that's the actual screen that would have booted in 1991 working in our software emulator. Let's test it using a demo disc I've prepared that includes modern software created by various Mega 65 developers. I wanna see if these newer titles will work with the original ROM on the software emulator. So as you saw, every single title I threw at the original ROM worked and even Commodore 64 mode works. There's a high level of compatibility between the original ROM and the updates the Mega 65 team is making to complete and add features. Bravo to you, Mega 65 team. I'm speaking to you right there. I have to admit this put a huge smile on my face. As a matter of fact, it even made me want to drink more hot cocoa. I felt as if someone magically transported me back to the Commodore headquarters in 1991 to experience the C65 in prototype form for the very first time. How cool is that? Now that we know the original ROM works with the software emulation, let's see if it works on the Nexus 4 or Mega 65 dev kit and those FPGA boards. The process to update the ROM is the same for both the FPGA board and the Mega 65. You remove the SD card from the FPGA, you place the SD card into a computer, you rename the original ROM file, mega65.rom. You do have to do it on the hardware. You do not have to do it on the XEMU. Copy the ROM file, the SD card, eject the SD card, insert the SD card into the FPGA and turn on the FPGA.
In a pleasant surprise, the original ROM works on the Nexus 4. Let's check out some software titles. Once again, we have a high level of compatibility on the FPGA hardware side with the original C65 ROM. Pretty amazing stuff. Finally, it was time to test my dev kit. I suspect that I'll get the same results that I did on the Nexus 4 or better, but let's give it a shot. So there you go. The original ROM does work in both software and hardware emulation. Don't shoot me YouTube guys and gals. I know every time I say FPGA is hardware emulation, I get all kinds of comments. I get it. It's not. It's something similar, but yeah, go ahead. Start to blast while I drink some more hot cocoa. Using the original ROM is a vast improvement over the open ROM. However, if you want the latest features of the Mega 65, the development team provides an option to patch the original ROM to include all the latest features of the closed ROM. Let's talk about that process next. There are a couple of ways to patch the original ROM. However, I'll share the easiest graphical user interface or GUI method using M65 Connect. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use a web browser and visit the Mega 65 file host at https colon slash slash files dot mega 65 dot org. Then you're going to click on the files button in the upper left corner of the page. In the file search box, type M65. You don't need to type anymore. And a list of M65 Connect versions will display. Click the download button, install the application following your computer's normal process. With M65 Connect installed, we're now ready to patch the original C65 software. So while we're at the files host, return to the files area and in the search area type diff files and the rom patch file named c65 rom diff files will appear click the download button and save the diff file to the same location as the original c65 rom file now what i love about m65 connect is it makes patching the original c65 rom a point and click process you want to load the m65 application from the main menu select file patch rom file and the patch ROM file dialog box will appear. Select the source ROM file by clicking the folder to the right of the text box to display a file selection dialog box. Navigate to the location of the original C65 ROM file named 911001.bin and select it. Select the ROM patch file by clicking the folder button to the right of the text box to display a file selection dialog box again. Navigate to the location of the diff file with the name similar to 920262.bdf. That will change based on the version of the diff file. Should be an incremental number going up. Verify the names in the text boxes are correct, just for good measure. Click the Save Patched ROM As button and the Save Patched ROM File As dialog box will appear. Save the file as mega65.bin and press the save button. And the new file will be saved to the same location as the two original files. The resultant mega65.bin file is now ready to use. 
When the Mega65 team releases an update to the diff file, use the same steps we just talked about to update either the original or your most recently updated ROM. The Mega65 development team announced that we will soon be able to apply the diff file updates from the Mega65 itself using the freezer menu. We'll copy the diff file over to the SD card. We'll pull up the freezer menu. There'll be an option to patch the ROM file and bam, we've got an updated ROM file. So now I'm gonna test the patched ROM using both software and hardware. Once again, I loaded the ROM into the emulator. I then loaded my Mega65 demos Im disk image, which is a .d81 file. I found that the patch ROM worked as expected without any issues in emulation. Let's check it out on the FPGA hardware. It would seem that the patch ROM is feature and function equivalent to the closed ROM that is available when you purchase the dev kit. So there's our look at patching ROMs and the whole history around ROMs and how you can use ROMs to explore the world of the Mega 65 and the Commodore C65. Hope you found that valuable. Hopefully that'll tide you over until March when the Easter Bunny delivers our Mega 65s. If you have any questions, make sure you throw them there down below in the comments. Be sure and check out the video description for the link to the companion blog post that includes all the additional information all the steps that you need to patch your ROM, download your ROM, install your ROM step by step. So uh, I'm hoping to get one more video out before Christmas, so stay tuned. Uh, I'm not sure what that's going to be now that the Mega 65 isn't going to be here over Christmas, but I do have some ideas. It may or may not be Mega 65 related. Also, we'll be doing a couple of live streams through the holidays, so make sure you follow me at Stephen Combs on Twitter. Also, be sure to subscribe below and look at the community post where I will post if I plan to go live with a live stream. Got some new equipment, including a Yolo Box Pro I've been playing with to up my live stream game. And I'm um, actually... Uh, uh, thinking about some gaming for the holidays uh, for a live stream, but I've also got a Texas Instrument Tippy I need to install. So if you'd like to vote on what you'd rather see, put that down below. But for now, I think that uh, concludes this video. Retro comes out.